people, we love to make things. To do it yourself, to DIY. In the attic, the basement, the backyard, and in front of a camera. And those camera DIYers, they've got something you'll like. From the TV studio to the studio apartment, they're making something up just for you. It's That DIY Show. Today. Thanks for the question. Big bowls. Viewer's Choice has some pro tips for dog lovers, and the Hive Mind classes it up with some homemade wine glass holders. And later. How are we going to do this next part then? Well, you've been hogging the power tools this whole time. Finally. You're way behind, buddy. Are you going to catch up anytime? What makes it a competition, boy? A mom and son battle for power tools, and we go behind the curtain with a hemp using home builder. One of the beautiful things about building with hemp is people get really excited. I had lots of people come over and help, even people coming to document and take video footage. Trying out some new materials, new ideas, and a whole lot more. But first, it's your questions and your projects on That DIY Show. Hi, viewers, Choice. I have a great Dane named Lucy, and she is so tall, every time when she eats out of her bowl, her neck looks so strained. Any ideas on to help her out? Hey, thanks for the question. You're gonna have to give me a second with this one. I don't really know what you mean. I think I need to become one with the dog. Oh, that sucks. I feel you, dog. Okay, I know what we need to do. I have a nifty design that's gonna lift that bowl off the ground and have her munching in peace. First step, we gotta take this big old one by 12 piece of pine and chop it down to 24 inches. This is our top. This is not scrap. We're gonna use that later. We have to trace out some holes in this top for the bowls. So there's three ways you can do this. Got my compass, set the radius using this little spin wheel. Just put it on the wood and give it a spin. <sighs> this thing really takes me back to grade seven math. I mean, stay in school, kids. On to my next trick. The nail and pencil. You just plant the nail in the wood and you draw a circle. It's not a circle, but it's circular. Don't judge it by my circle. This method will get you by in a pinch. It just takes a bit of practice. Now for my favorite method. Trace the note a circle. Perfect. Now, we're not gonna use these bowls for the project. So it's time to use the real ones. This project is for a large dog, so we're using these big bowls, because big dogs eat a lot of food. I gotta make sure I keep at least three quarters of an inch of space on the outside of the bowls, because that's where the legs are gonna mount. We have to drill a pilot hole so we can get the jigsaw blade in and start cutting. We have to cut the hole half an inch inside of the line. There's no real easy way to do this. I'm just gonna wing it. You can always make the hole bigger, but you can't make it any smaller. So it's okay if you're a little bit too far on the inside of the line and the bowl doesn't fit. You just go back and trim it up. It's a mighty fine hole, if I do say so myself. And now, for the moment of truth. Will the bowls fit? Ah, they're pretty close. Just a little bit of sanding will probably fix it.
We're going to dress this up a bit with some trim. And to do that, we need to take a few measurements. Let's chop this thing up. We got two pieces at 25 and a half inches and two pieces at 11 and a quarter. There's so many different types of joints we can use on a project like this, but for this, we're using simple butt end joints. They're accessible and they give a nice rustic feel to this. Now we're just gonna glue it, clamp it, and put it together with some brad nails. This thing's really starting to take shape. Time to get ready to put the legs on. I staggered the nails while I was putting them in to give it a little support on the top and the bottom of the leg in case the dog's getting a little rowdy when he's eating like they do. And there we have it. Mahogany red. It's gonna look great on the pine. Now, of course, you don't have to stain the bottoms of the leg, but what if the dog noticed? It's all about the details with these projects. The stain really brings out the imperfections in the wood, which is great. Every piece is unique. There's all sorts of different stains you could use here. It's a great chance to turn the project from just a simple project into something that's custom to your kitchen. You could even design the colors after your pup. And if your dog's a chewer, maybe use something non-toxic, like beeswax. I really like the color I went with, but you know what's gonna make it pop? Throwing those silver bowls in. I love it. Stainless steel looks great with stain. I made this for a big dog. That's why we have big bowls and high legs. If your dog's smaller, just adjust to fit what they need. Now I have this amazing workshop and all these great tools, but you don't need any of that to build these projects at home. All you need is a little creativity. So if you're looking for inspiration, track down the Viewer's Choice team in the streets and submit your question. I'm always happy to help out. Around the world and right around the corner, DIYers and master crafters have something to show and a story to tell. It's That DIY Show. I'm Noel Tausig. I design houses. I build houses with hempcrete and all forms of natural building. And this is it. This is my house. Hempcrete is a uh, it's very high performance wall filler simple benefits it's mold and builder resistant it's fireproof it's rodent and bug resistant it's carbon neutral you grow hemp and it sequesters carbon its longevity is off the charts shall we say I first heard about hempcrete 2013 approximately. I found it on YouTube. I was researching alternative building processes and I came across hempcrete and I was so excited right away. <laughs> it was very hard to find. The only place I could find it was in the UK and uh, at that time it was not available. So I just kept it on the back burner. A few years later, I took a workshop and it confirmed everything that I had been suspicious of. You could see very quickly the quality of the product. To build a hempcrete house is not unlike building any other house, really. You start with a foundation of some sort. Once you've got your foundation, you stick frame your walls, and here's where you diverge. A normal house has a whole elaborate collection of wall fillers and membranes and such. In the hempcrete house, once your wall is framed, you'll form around your wall and you fill your forms. Once your walls are finished, you want to let them dry approximately a month. The simplest way to finish a hempcrete wall is with one single coat of lime plaster. Now for perspective, that's replacing drywall, three coats of mudding, sanding, three coats of paint. You tint your lime plaster to the color you want, you put it on once, 
and you're done. One of the beautiful things about building with hempcrete is people get really excited. I had lots of people come over and help lugging bins of hemp, tamping, and even people coming to document and take video footage. What a thrill, so fun to share. And we're back. Nice to see you, children. Today, we're building farms for hempcrete. <laughs> Mixing hempcrete is incredibly simple. You use hemp herds, which is the pulp of the hemp plant, and mason's lime mixed in a mortar mixer with a small amount of clay and just enough water to bind it together. You'll want it to pack like dry snow. This is the last one to make up the corner, and then we'll do the experimental batch of hempcrete. All right, so how do you think the house feels that that corner is going to be an experiment? The house loves it. The whole house is an experiment. Uh, hempcrete is a wonderful building material for people who are self-motivated and want to do things themselves. You know, it would make a lot of sense to have an experienced person come and show you the basic idea. One of my philosophies of building is that it shouldn't be an elitist trade. It shouldn't be something that people don't know how to do. So I'm perfectly willing to share my knowledge and enable people. I'm perfectly willing to have people come and help me. Doing something for yourself adds value that you can't calculate in dollar amounts. In the early 2000s, I was really burning out on building houses. I was getting really tired of the materials that I had to work with every day not really satisfied with the quality of the houses I was building. It's very apparent to me that the world is really hungry for better things. It's always a game of how can you make things a little bit better. It's not just the environment of the world. It's not just the personal environment that people live in. It's not just the quality of the thing that you're creating. It's the whole picture and the interrelationships that you really want. And when you make people feel happy and give them something they feel good about, they're gonna do better things in the world. We have the ability now. I know it's a little bit scary to jump into things that aren't standard and that aren't into the building code already, but it's all there. The modern experiments have been done. It's proven. It really is as good as they say. Some folks are doing that already in other parts of the world, but it's so new here. Um, one step at a time. From the workshop to the studio floor, we've got our eyes on the prize. It's That DIY Show. We're moments away from the main event, another head-to-head -head battle build. It's time to see who will rise above and take home that golden hammer. I'm Hubert McTarnish. And I'm George McGibbons. Let's go meet our very excited competitors. My name is Colleen Dorsey. My building experience would be quite limited. I'm going to be working with my son, Donald J.C. Marshall. Uh, he's 11 and a half. I think he's a little too cocky, but that's okay. I know that I'm going to do great. Colleen works as a clinical therapist. In her free time, you'll find her volunteering in her community, advocating for mental health initiatives, and splashing paint on something until it looks pretty. I think I'm better um, at carpentry than my mom. I've used hammers, saws, sanders. You know what this means, Mom. Donald enjoys building furniture for his siblings, watching YouTube, playing video games, and ignoring his mother. I'm going to get you. I'm going to win. It's time for your timeout. No, I'm serious. Don't. You're going down, boy. Down. Mm -hmm. That's what you look like. I look fabulous. This time on Battle Build, you'll both have a pile of dirty pallets to build a magical flying table with turrets that shoot lasers. Okay, just a regular table, but with only two hours to create something spiffy for the judges. Ready, set, build! And away they go, hauling the pallets up onto their tables, though Donald seems to be having some trouble. And his mother's taking advantage of that, grabbing the reciprocating saw first. Mother of the year. 
busy little bee over there. Buzz, buzz. <laughs> Can I have the sander? When I'm ready, you're just going to have to wait your turn, boy. Finally. Ah, family outings, always so much fun. You're way behind. Are you going to catch up anytime? If you didn't steal all the tools, I wouldn't be behind. What makes it a competition, boy? Well, Mom, I'm all caught up to you. So how are we going to do this next part, then? Well, you've been hogging the power tools this whole time. How about we do rock, paper, scissors, and then whoever wins gets to use the power tools, and then whoever loses has to use the hands off. Is that a deal? Yeah. All right, ready? One, two. Find out who wins after the break. We've got hands and we've got plans. What more do you need? It's That DIY Show. the world and right around the corner. DIYers and master crafters have something to show and a story to tell. It's That DIY Show. Welcome back to Battle Build. I'm Hubert McTarnish. And I'm George McGibbons. Our mother and son duo, Colleen and Donald, are battling to build a pallet wood coffee table. Now it's around a rock, paper, scissors to see who uses the chop saw. Loser has to cut off their hand. No, no, they have to cut by hand. Bye bye hand. One, two, three. Oh. That's really funny to watch. Way to get back at your mom there, Donald. Sorry, Mom, you can use the chop saw too. Oh, that's so sweet of you. This is killing me. <laughs> Thank you so much. That was so much better. You're welcome. I can really feel the enthusiasm bubbling up from deep inside him. Hey, this reminds me of grade eight. I built a plant stand in industrial arts class and I threw all kinds of happy paint on it so it was yellow and it was red and it was blue and it looked amazing and it didn't even matter that it was a little wobbly. It was the best thing I ever did. Aside from having me, right mom? Right mom? Oh, this is reminding me of grade eight. Doing a great job over there. Thanks. You're welcome. Do you think Grampy's gonna like this table? I don't know. That's right, drown her out, kid. Why? I think she's delightful. Yeah, you would. So what are you gonna do next? I'm gonna use the top saw to cut my top pieces. 
Ah, watching Sad Kids with Power Tools never seems to get old. You know, Sad Kids with Power Tools was the name of my first band. You had a band? Yeah, we were pretty loud. Why? Because of all the power tools. I'm gonna add some spacers to my table for some shelves, and it's gonna look great because I'm still in it to win it. Woo, she's got some strong mom energy there. Is that what you're calling it? Well, I think some of these nails are hitting it. Uh, yeah, that looks great. That's great. I'm proud of me. Good job. Oh, it looks so good. I'm winning for sure. Woohoo! Yay me! Mom for the win. In the meantime, Donald's thinking of the video game that he left on pause at home. Yes! That is delightful! He's the strong, silent type that tells me he's worried. Yeah, I don't know if worried's the word for it. So I missed a little screw there, but that's okay. It gives a character. And yeah, I missed a few here, but that is what these are for. I'll just put that there, and it's even more lovely than before. Just think about it. In the middle of my table, roar, 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 are tiger nails. Somebody tries to dismantle my table later, oh no, they're gonna get a big surprise. Yes. With only 30 seconds left on the clock, Donald and Colleen still have a lot left to do. At first you don't succeed, nail, nail again. Wise advice, but she's really got to hurry up. Donald's expertly cutting the ends off his table, and Colleen looks like she's just randomly throwing nails into hers. And Donald's almost finished. With only 10 seconds left to go, it's neck and neck. I think this nail gun is my favorite tool. Colleen's enthusiasm alone might win oh, this. Oh, knock it off! Oh, you did a good job. It looks nice. You did all, all right, too, Mom. I think I've got a real shout here. Will it be Colleen's table with surprise tiger nails? Or will it be Donald's more finely crafted table built on cynicism and spite? <laughs> oh, congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations, Donald. Congratulations, Mother. Donald J.C. Marshall, winner of the Golden Hammer. 100% pure gold. I'm really excited that I won this competition. I think my design looks better. I'm just not a really big fan of losing. I, I, I really question, you know, whether or not I really did lose. And come on, look at those nails that were sticking out of Mom's. I don't think that I've given him enough chores to do. So maybe, maybe, he could work on a back deck for us. I knew this was mine from the start. Thanks for watching Battle Build. I'm Hubert McTurnan. And I'm George McGibbons. Until next time, keep your tools sharp and your nose to the grindstone.